Today I'm going to show you how I edit some photographs that I've taken at a recent air show, this air museum in uh, Kingsbury, Texas. That's me in the photograph and wife shot the photo, uh, but I want to make this more vintage looking and I can't do that with all the people in the background. And so the first thing I do is uh, I'll do an auto. And of course, this is my way of doing it, not necessarily your way or any one way, but this is what I do. Uh, so do an auto just to get it somewhat close, which in this case looks very close to what I like. Uh, I may bring down the shadows a little bit like this. And then I will open this up in Photoshop. Now, I have to say I'm, I'm using the, the beta version of Photoshop, which has a little bit more AI enhancements than the regular Photoshop. So if you don't have the, the uh, beta, as long as you have the subscription, obviously uh, you have access to all the beta versions of the software. So, uh, so now it's here and I will just take the lasso tool and draw a line around these people here. And you don't have to be really close, I found. It just knows that this is what you want to get rid of. I don't put any prompt. Say generate. And this takes a little while. And that looks pretty good. Obviously, you know, it gives you three choices of something you want to put in it. That, that looks pretty cool. So I'm going to leave that. And then I will take this man out same thing and that looks good by itself so I'm not going to fool with that one and then let's see we'll take this out also don't want that red pipe there or that water bottle so let's take this stuff out. Because this is generating on the cloud, so it usually takes a little bit. And, you know, actually, I think I'm going to leave this little sign here. I mean, it could be anything. Maybe it's a price sign. And uh, I'm going to take all this stuff out. Uh, you know what, actually, that was a vintage car sitting there, but I will take out the flag only because it's just a little bit distracting here. That was a, there's a Model T. Um, he had uh, flags on the back of his car during this show. It's pretty Pretty cool show. If you're ever in Kingsbury, they have two two of these air shows a year. I'll take out that blue hut. All right, that looks good. This this stuff back here. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and see what it does to take this this little tent out and this person here most of the time in here you're kind of waiting for it to generate I'm pretty sure it generates up on the cloud I think I mentioned that but anyway that's I think that's it for here there's two people here and i know these two gentlemen they're actually dressed in 1930s outfits um in this instance i'm supposed to be a 1930s um, outdoorsman adventurer hunter maybe so i think i'm done here i'm going to go ahead and flatten this because i'm done with those things 
And the next thing I use is uh, I go, I, I use this Skylum software. Um, I have Luminar AI and Neo. Uh, I, for whatever reason, I keep going back to the AI version, which the Neo is the newest. But I have a lot of plugins, uh, templates, I mean, um, in here that doesn't seem to transfer over. I might have to figure out how to do that. So I have this, some of these favorites. And on my vintage photographs, I I tend to go either black and white or or color or some muted color. But lately, I've been liking the way this this forest stream uh, template goes, and and I've tweaked this so it's based on their plugin, their or their their uh, template forest stream, but um, it's based on on theirs and i've done some other things in it to it which i think in here i'm gonna go mystical bring that up that really puts a slight glow in the in the shadows i kind of like the way it looks and so I don't know if you can see that just brings out the shadows a little bit more and puts a slight glow in there and I think that's about it. I don't. The cool thing with with this uh, Luminar, it has this face light thing, and I use that quite a bit when the faces are more in shadow. Uh, but in this case, uh, my face is not too shadow. You can see how if I bring it all the way up, so it's just lightening the face, so it automatically notices the face. And actually, I might bring it up a little bit. And I'm going to look as I look. I'm not going to try and slim my face, which it, it will do all that stuff too. Um, I'm not going to do anything with skin or body. It's just, it's just me. You know what? I think I'm going to go color. I might bring down the vibrance of this just slightly. Yeah, yeah. Bring this back to Photoshop. So the we'll history, we can see it really brings out the um, the look of this. Now the other thing I like doing is uh, we shot this at a I think 5.6, maybe even f8, maybe I think. Because we were shooting groups of people, and uh, we I think we left the the the, uh, the camera set to a uh, aperture that does not give me a, a a good shallow depth of field, which I love. Um, so I'm going to bring this back to camera raw. Which, if uh, let me show you this. So in in these versions of Photoshop, it has these neural filters which are really cool and it does have this depth blur which uh, which works okay but I love the one that in uh, Adobe I mean not Adobe it's all Adobe in uh, camera raw yeah uh, to me you can fine-tune it so I mean you can see that here around my hat it did some weird thing and in here there's really no way to um, to fool with any kind of masking. I mean, it's got this this thing over my shoulder, this thing around the hat, and there's no masking, so I can't I can't adjust it in here. So uh, let me cancel that. Go back to camera raw. Go to the lens blur. Apply. Again, it does its thing on the cloud. I'm pretty sure a lot of this does it may be doing this on the on the computer but uh, it'll it usually takes a couple of minutes so there is that and you see it still had has a little bit around my hat but here's the cool thing here is With this, uh, it gives you a focal range, 
Also, you can visualize the depth, and you can see that uh, the yellows is what's really in focus. It goes to the oranges, which is more a little more out of focus. Everything else is is blurred, and I can tweak that here. I can move this the slider over. That that gives everything in the foreground, uh, or what it thinks is the foreground, or I can tweak this back. And I like doing it until you can see the the barrel is now more blurred. So if I turn it off, you can see. The only thing I don't want is to get so far that it starts to uh, make me more out of focus. And that's a little bit too much. You know, I can already see my face is out of focus here. Maybe I went too far here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that's cool. That's as far as I can go with this. Now, I could manually focus. So you can see, and I should have left it up there. So let me zoom back in. This little piece around my hat so I can do this um, focus or blur so I want to blur that out I have it it's at uh, 100 percent I'm going to bring this down a little bit and the brush size is pretty small but you can use the scroll wheels on the mouse and get that so that and this kind of top of my hat got a little jagged looking. And this cross here. All right. And I think I want this board on the back of the. Let's shit this. I want this board on the as the back of the seat of this uh, this truck. I want that focused. And this back here. And make this steering wheel come back. Yeah. That looks okay. Okay. That looks good. And I think I'm, I'm going to use the blur tool and blur the foreground right in front of me slightly. Yeah. Got a little bit on my boots, but let's see. Get that back off. Oops, went a little heavy there. Okay, so the other adjustments that you can do in here, uh, you have this different settings for Boca. This is the default one. Then you have this more circular. You get these little circular uh, uh, highlights, which looks pretty cool. Uh, this one... And this one also gives you little circular things, and it gives you little instructions. I mean, not uh, a little pop-up uh, definition of each one. So I think, I mean, I like I like the circular look of the highlights, 
And also you can adjust the blur amount. So I can go not so heavy handed here to 100%, which really everything out of focus, which I do kind of like that too. It really draws attention to the to the subject. But in this case, I think I want, I want to see some things in the background, but I still want everything on the subject. This, this cool old, old truck, which they tell me they're, Getting ready to uh, to renovate that. Okay, so I think that's about it for that. I'll bring the, this down a little bit. Exposure. A little more in the shadows. And then I'm going to use this radial gradient. for a uh, vignette, bring the exposure down, yeah, about there, one and a half stop, and you can adjust the feathering, but I tend to keep the feathering down about there, I would guess, 23, 23%, okay. So it looks pretty cool. Actually, I think I'm going to go back to make it a little bit darker. Yeah. Okay, now we're back in Photoshop. That's the final, final product. I think you can always tweak these to death, but I think I've done enough on this one. Next thing is I will put my little watermark at the bottom. Our JHDT Productions created an action for that. So that saves a little time. And that's it. I'll just save with the rest of them and start editing another one. So again, this is how I do it. It takes a little time to tweak, do all these tweaks. But it's fun. I find it very satisfying.